participants. And it would have been difficult, actually. Many people from outside Delhi may be also, you know, linked to this and would be attending. Sir, it's a great honor to have you, sir. And, uh, you know, certainly you don't need any introduction because you are so well-known nationally and globally. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it would, it would, I feel, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, very embarrassing to, <laughs> uh, to introduce you to this audience. Uh, every one of us knows so well, uh, you know, but some of the things I will do emphasize uh, so that uh, the youngsters uh, know about it. Uh, you know, we don't have, I keep telling that we don't have many role models uh, before us. And uh, certainly Dr. B.P. Paul, Dr. Swaminathan, and uh, sir, yourself. And, uh, you know, uh, once we decided that we will bring out a publication and, uh, you know, it's still not yet done. And uh, so these role models are required to be actually appropriately described and then appreciated so that the others appreciate and they know, particularly the students and youngsters, because shaping the life of youngsters requires role models. And sir, you are one of those. And uh, you know, I have uh, seen your ancestral place. I have visited that. I was fortunate to visit your place, sir, in Azmir. And uh, you know, the kind of uh, building, palatial building that, uh, you know, even those days, uh, your parents uh, constructed and, uh, you know, uh, two storied and then how, you know, it was so nicely done. And uh, so also my colleagues and friends, uh, you know, particularly my DDG colleagues and uh, very senior ones, Dr. Pintel being here and, uh, you know, ASRB, uh, the, you know, members, maybe chairperson are here. Uh, and similarly, we have the Honorable Vice Chancellors, Dr. Prabhu and so many dignitaries, Dr. N.K. Singh and many others. Uh, being uh, present today, it's a, a great opportunity to listen to you, sir. Uh, but uh, starting or journeying from that remote place, and those days it must have been very remote, uh, you know, in Azmir, uh, nearby Azmir. And uh, so, uh, so starting or journeying from there, studying agriculture, and then coming to IRI, and uh, again, uh, becoming... Uh, you know, uh, moving on in the ladder, in fact, uh, you know, coming to the stage of, uh, you know, becoming the, you know, Director General and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Secretary Department of Agriculture Research and Education. Obviously, this journey would have been uh, very stressful and must have, uh, you know, put in a lot of efforts because coming from that, uh, you know, kind of situation, I also come from a small village, Dr. A.K. Singh was telling. So it takes quite a bit of energy and effort uh, to first of all establish and have one's own roots uh, because unless one has that, you know, nobody is, uh, you know, going to really lift you and put you as uh, in that position. So certainly, sir, that kind of remarkable contributions as a breeder, as a scientist, and subsequently as an administrator and policy makers, the kind of footprints you have left behind, sir, that is unparalleled. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I doubt in the future how many can really, you know, uh, come to that uh, kind of uh, uh, position or even achievement, uh, what you have done uh, in your lifetime. In fact, and you continue doing that. So that's the remarkable part of it. And, uh, you know, uh, there's no rest, in fact. Uh, and the kind of contribution you have made, I don't think, uh, you know, I, although I, I, I am in the same position today, but you created 33 institutions. Uh, you know, uh, that's something which is unthinkable today. And, uh, you know, nurtured each one of them. Uh, you know, we are uh, with great difficulty trying to maintain them. And uh, building those institutions and, uh, you know, uh, and nurturing them, that was something which was very, very remarkable. And, uh, you know, during those days, uh, emphasizing on hybrids. And, uh, you know, my, my introduction would be a bit longer than expected, so, uh, so that's required. So as, you, as I said, we need to know our role models, and the youngsters must know that. That's now 790. So uh, obviously, there are a large number of youngsters. So, so this is what, uh, you know, uh, uh, puts uh, Dr. Puroda uh, at a very high pedestal. Uh, you know, as a director general, not only this, the hybrid program, several other programs which he actually spearheaded, uh, you know, including 
the NATP, the you know now subsequently we had NAIP and today we have higher education project. But the way it was designed, and in fact subsequent programs they copied many of those provisions which were there in NATP and which was so nicely uh, planned, uh, you know, uh, elaborately planned. And that is what they're all beautiful examples of your uh, dynamic leadership, visionary leadership, and that all, uh, we, we always uh, discuss about it and then try to emulate. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when, the, when uh, you know, not only there, you know, before that, when you were, uh, you know, on director MBPJ, the kind of gene bank you create, on parallel, you know, in fact, globally it is recognized. Uh, one of the largest gene banks, and today uh, more than uh, four lakh germ plasm, uh, you know, maybe close to 4.5 lakh germ plasm being preserved there. And, uh, you know, the country takes pride in this. Uh, and the kind of legacy you have left behind by way of creating this facility, uh, that is something again, you know, for all future generations should remember you. And not only here, the kind of contributions you made in the field of germplasm, that has been recognized. For instance, ICRISAT has their gene bank, uh, you know, named in, uh, you know, um, by your, uh, your name. Uh, so, so similarly, there are other, uh, you know, gene banks uh, globally, uh, uh, you know, uh, which are uh, uh, named, uh, you know, accordingly. And these are kind of recognitions uh, which, uh, you know, are very difficult to actually achieve. And, but you have done that effortlessly. Uh, because that is so ingrained in your character. That is something I would really request my youngsters. You know, it has to be ingrained in your character effortlessly, all the time, without rest, continue doing, without any expectation. And that is something which is, uh, you know, uh, very rare to actually find uh, in, in persons uh, in, uh, in today's world. Uh, you know, and that has given you not only, uh, you know, uh, awards and honors, recognitions, uh, across uh, beyond borders of the country, you know, globally, you know, that is something again, you know, uh, uh, after Professor Swaminathan, maybe uh, you are the person so, uh, you know, eloquently and uh, elaborately recognized by, you know, uh, so many organizations and countries and associations. Of course, uh, the country, uh, you know, India has also recognized you with Padma Bhushan, but it's more than that, actually. Uh, you know, Padma Bhushan is only an indicator of uh, all that you have done, but it's not all. It's so, you know, uh, difficult to describe by one or two awards, uh, you know, whether it is uh, Rafi Ahmad Kidwai Award, whether it is Om Prakash Basin Award, whether it is Borlog Award. There is a long list of awards that have been, you know, uh, conferred on you, uh, you know, nationally. Uh, and similarly, the international ones, and that's something, again, Lifetime Achievement Awards and, uh, you know, uh, and national awards, for instance, Ministry of Vietnam and also uh, the, the uh, you know, Ministry of Agriculture of Armenia. So you have kind of a huge garland of those recognitions and awards, you know, a very long list. And there are only a few examples which I cited. And kind of institutions globally you have created. That is something, again, I don't think anyone... Uh, in the country has done that. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, APARI, uh, now I am associated uh, uh, with that, uh, the APARI that you built, uh, you know, uh, in a few, uh, you know, in Bangkok, uh, and which now it's very vibrant today, and 20 years you remain executive secretary and continued the efforts uh, of APARI. And now, as a Asia Pacific Association of Agriculture Research Institutions, the many universities and institutions are now part of this. And I'd say it has become grown so huge uh, you know, today. And as I see, very close interactions and uh, with the countries and the representatives that is happening today, they're all your vision uh, that has been translated so well. And 20 years you spearheaded that. And similarly, you know, GFAR, the Global Forum uh, uh, for agricultural research uh, in FAO Rome. And uh, wherever you have been there, and you served as a founder president of this, that too, almost, uh, you know, uh, uh, 12, 13 years. And that is something, again, you know, uh, it has, it, you have your own footprint there, very remarkable footprint, and that is, uh, you know, on parallel. Uh, you know, similarly, you know, uh, not only this, in the CG system, you have, you remain so active in terms of 
not just membership of uh, the board of trustees, but also uh, as uh, you know, chair of the governing board of uh, ICRISA, and choosing uh, the at a very crucial time when there are difficulties, and uh, you know, ICRISAT was passing through, uh, and then choosing the kind of uh, you know DG ICRISAT, which remarkably contributed subsequently uh, to terms. And uh, so they are the kind of footprints that you have left even at a global level. And similarly, several global conferences, you know, we arrange one and get tired, but you keep organizing them, whether it is, uh, you know, a G card or whether it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the global conference on women in agriculture or starting with crop science, you know, Congress in, in India. Uh, Hughes won and the Honorable Prime Minister inaugurating that. And, uh, and subsequently, the most recent one, the International Agro-Biodiversity Congress. Again, Honorable Prime Minister inaugurating this. They are some of the examples, and they're so inspiring, sir, these examples. And uh, we always see, see at this, look at this, uh, you know, to follow them. And I believe my youngsters who are now 800, I uh, know, uh, there was 900 something, and now 814. Uh, so, uh, so they are some of these examples, sir, and you continue still you know, uh, doing those global conferences uh, and then uh, contribute in the process. Being president of the academy uh, and now spearheading the activities of TAS. And uh, every month you will have something, something new happening there and the kind of documents you build, the kind of ideas you put there and the way you organize this, uh, you know, kind of sessions, brainstorming and discussion fora and uh, bring out those issues so clearly. There is so clarity of thought. Uh, so that is something, again, remarkable. And uh, not many, many can speak and many can uh, talk, but bringing those exactly in a systematic manner, in adequately describing those and uh, putting those words and phrases and uh, giving so nicely those ideas into, kind of putting them into action formats, uh, again, they are again remarkable, and the kind of science congress organized in Susa campus, you know, that is always remembered, sir. The, the efforts that you put in and the way it was organized. Uh, so, so this is actually innumerable uh, kind of recognitions and then contributions, sir. And uh, you know, I can keep on describing. There are only a few I have placed before uh, today's uh, participants uh, in this webinar. Uh, you know, uh, whether it is. Uh, as a DDG crop, so whether it is DG, whether it is Ekrisat, whether it is international, you know, whether it is Jakarta, I left that chapter, whether it is Jakarta, and, uh, you know, uh, everywhere. So your marks are, uh, you know, or they, nobody can actually, you know, or they're indelible marks, rather, you know, very difficult to wipe them up, and uh, they would remain in the memory of everybody, and a true role model for every one of us, and uh, for the whole, uh, country uh, in the arena of agriculture, those who are associated, and I'm sure uh, your today's lecture would be equally inspiring and uh, you know uh, and, and uh, a path uh, finder again and giving us new ideas, opportunities, directions, and guidance. And uh, we will certainly greatly benefit from your uh, uh, thoughtful uh, you know lecture, so as it has been always. Uh, so, a uh, very warm welcome to you, sir. I have taken more time, but that was required, sir. There are many more things I know, but I can't speak everything. Uh, you know, time is limiting. So, with these few words, sir, so I welcome you, sir. So, floor is yours. Uh, please uh, go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for kindly agreeing. All the participants are required to kindly mute themselves. Sir, you are muted. Unmute yourself, sir. Is it okay? Is it okay now? Ah, sir, it's fine, sir. Well, thank you, Dr. Mahapatra, for all those generous uh, words and uh, appreciation, which I don't know whether really I deserve, but really uh, appreciate your sentiments that you have expressed. Uh, thanks also for agreeing to chair this lecture. 
I would like to especially thank uh, A.K. Singh, uh, the director, the new director rather. I wish we had uh, this kind of lecture in the BP Paul Auditorium and congratulate him for taking over. But uh, COVID-19 is forcing us to work from home. So my best wishes for your success in this new prestigious position. I also would like to thank Dr. Rashmi Agarwal and uh, all those uh, colleagues who are participating today, like Dr. Pantel, Prabhu, Dr. Mishra, N.K. Singh, H.S. Gupta, and others, uh, and, and the faculty members of Postgraduate School and Genetics Club. I consider it a privilege to uh, deliver this 27th Dr. B.P. Paul Memorial Address. As I myself had been uh, the, the last batch of students admitted by him as director at IRA at that time, I had a long association, Thank you. not only as a student, but later on also with uh, uh, him through various uh, ways and interactions. I would like to Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Behind talking, behind right, sir. should stop it. Rai, you mute yourself. Hello. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, yes, sir. sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Sir. Well, uh, while admiring Dr. B.P. Paul, about whom much has already been said by Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, uh, he had been a role model himself. And uh, as a student, and then later on, uh, following his footprints uh, while working in ICR and at NBPGR, I had close association with him. And uh, as you would see in these uh, slides, uh, Dr. Paul was recognized. So you have to share this slide. Right, please share slides. Pardon? The go for sharing of slides. He, he, he is sharing, sir. Roy, uh, please, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You can go to the next one, Roy. Yeah. Uh, as you would see here, Dr. Paul was a known wheat uh, geneticist. He is in the fields with uh, Bharat Ratna. C. Subramaniam ji, and uh, he had been also a great uh, rose breeder and came out with many uh, in interesting and important varieties, which are even today known in the country and are being appreciated. As you would see, his recognition for rose and the wheat breeding were recognized and even government of India came out with the release of his stamp after his demise. At that time, we were so pleased that his contributions had been recognized. Much has been said about this. He was the first Indian director of IERI, then also the first director general of reorganized ICR. It was he who uh, headed the council when all agriculture research institutions working under different uh, uh, you know organizations and ministries were brought under the umbrella of Indian Council of Agriculture Research. He received Padma Vibhushan Award. He was fellow of Royal Society. Uh, he was a philanthropist himself and donated for that matter, all his property to IRI, a rare example, which hardly you would see anywhere. And uh, a, a person of great etiquette, decency, culture, and affection, affection for all his colleagues. I had seen how much he loved Dr. Swaminathan, Dr. A.B. Joshi, and how much he loved even young students like us. And when I was 
selected as director NBPGR. He was one of the members of the selection committee. And uh, after that, when I met him, he said that we are so pleased that you have agreed to come here. We want our genetic resources to be protected for future. So please do take good care. And that's where from where I got inspired to see that something tangible is done. When we look at, uh, we, we see that uh, uh, there had been various uh, reforms. He was himself the first reformist. That, as I mentioned, uh, ICR was reorganized and he became the first director general of a reorganized ICR. And uh, he believed in, in change wherever he had been. Also, he strengthened the PG school at IRI. And uh, uh, therefore, I thought that why not I talk today when uh, Ashok requested to suggest a topic that uh, let this be on reform. And you all know reform means change. And change we must, but change is difficult. Uh, business as usual generally would not help, but change must come from within. If it is imposed, it will never be uh, you know, owned and uh, accepted by those who work in the system. And uh, I had been believing this myself and uh, this any reform that you want should be consultative and participatory and a reform must also be disruptive so that with less of initiative, more are benefited. In, in that respect, I therefore thought of uh, talking today about uh, reforms for secure and sustainable agriculture. Why secure and sustainable? I'll come it to a little later, but uh, when you look at uh, the reform process itself, the Green Revolution by itself was uh, a, a reform process which was innovation-led success. And it was based on four cradles of success, that is policy support, institutions, human resources, and partnership. I will come to them briefly. Uh, the first prime minister had said, everything else can wait, but not agriculture. And uh, there was a tremendous effort to have capital investment in agriculture and create required infrastructure, which helped us in achieving green revolution or else it would have not been possible. As you see, our net area, though it is larger than that of China, but has remained static for almost more than six decades. So we don't have any possibility of further horizontal expansion. But we have done well in increasing our irrigation potential. As you would see here, the uh, irrigation potential has been almost doubled. Uh, we have started with the National Seed Corporation, State Seed Corporation, and then uh, promoted private sector. And today, uh, holding varieties coverage, which was almost nil, Till green revolution time has gone to more than 60 to 70 percent depending on different crops and uh, fertilizer use where we didn't have any fertilizer use uh, at the time of green revolution now we are consuming almost 180 kg per hectare of nutrients uh, which means about 25 to 27 million tons and thanks again to have created the, under the cooperative sector one of the largest fertilizer factories like this, like IFCO and CRIPCO. Also, beside the capital investment for infrastructure on institutional side, I would say that uh, Indian policymakers had uh, definitely done well in creating one of the strongest NARs. ICR and DARE got recognized, reorganized again in 1972 when Dr. Swaminathan became first director general come secretary of Department of Agriculture, Research and Education. And that time this department was created uh, as one of the 
departments of Ministry of Agriculture. That stature made all the difference in decision making in further expansion. Today, ICR institutions are almost 104. University is the first one which we started in Pantanagar in 1960. Now we have 71. And uh, the most interesting part was that research, education, and extension, the three important wings of any agricultural research for development were brought under same umbrella. This is a unique example, which you will not find elsewhere. The Philippine Council, the Pakistan Council for Agriculture Research, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, they were all created on ICR model, but unfortunately have not yet been able to get that status and unification of functions. Education is in education ministry, agriculture is with agriculture, and uh, extension is with another department. So whatever could be achieved was in fact, because of not only the, the uh, infrastructure, but institutional support and human resource and initiative and milestones. When you look at ICR website, these milestones are listed there and you will find that uh, many new initiatives were taken. So whatever we could achieve were through some kind of you know, reform process, which was a continuous uh, exercise. And I would say reform has to be dynamic. It is not one time initiative and effort. And from time to time, it, it must address the concerns of uh, existing challenges and opportunities. So I would not go into the details of this, but you would find that many things have happened. And as a result, we had green, white, and blue revolutions. We had six-fold increase in food grains. We had almost a, a tenfold increase in horticulture. Horticulture production has excelled even the food grain production for the last five years. There is reduction in poverty from 70 to now 20%. Uh, maintaining buffer stock. Uh, I don't think many countries would have this kind of uh, happy situation when today we are faced with a problem of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that the whole world is thinking of food system security. And recently we addressed an open letter to UN and G20 and national leaders where 170 people had signed it, including prime ministers, former prime ministers, uh, Nobel laureates, uh, world food laureates, and many Padma awardees from India, including Dr. Swaminathan. And there it has been addressed that if we do not take care of our food system and ensure uh, its availability and mobility around the world, perhaps there will be more misery and uh, there will be more concern for uh, future health because of lack of immunity due to the non-availability of proper nutrition. Milk, almost eight to nine times. Fish production, almost 12 times. And this not from the marine capture, but has come from inland fishery. This was never there before six decades ago. And now you see amazing progress that country has made. Thanks again to institutions, human resource, technologies, and uh, progressive farmers. Uh, along with the support of the uh, government in regard to including export as well. Today, India is exporting about 20 million tons of food grains. Our export globally from agriculture are around uh, 40 billion US dollars. And this year we have had record production for food grains, rice, wheat, maize, all seeds and cotton. It's a great scenario from begging bowl status when I joined IRI as a student to today when we look back, I think much has been achieved and we have shown to the rest of the world that we can solve our own problems and uh, not only solve our own problems, but can be world leaders in future, but would require 
similar reforms and support and policy support. And we find that over the last two decades, somehow, policy support for agriculture research for development and uh, uh, is a matter of concern. And also we see that there is a, a complacency, maybe because we have produced enough, we have buffer stock, we are having now Food Security Act, where even 67% people are being uh, provided cheap uh, food. Uh, so people think that we can probably now live on organic agriculture or even zero-based uh, budget farming. Economic Survey of India lately has been talking about this, that the Green Revolution had been an over-exploitative and non-sustainable approach. No doubt, it had been over-exploitative because without water, pleasure, pesticides, uh, energy, uh, mechanization, all this would have not happened. But then, it certainly became cereal-centric because of more dependence on subsidy, government support, minimum support price, and procurement. So maybe we need to look at those policies again. It, it became labor-intensive, so we have to think in the terms of now mechanization, and uh, we need to make sure that our over-exploitation of water, soil, nutrient, chemicals, and energy is now uh, made more sustainable. Looking at all this, whole grains, milk, fish, green, white, uh, blue revolutions, why it is necessary today to still have reforms in agriculture? Anybody would ask this question. And uh, for this matter, when we look at challenges, we have to realize that there are global challenges as well as there are national challenges. Global like, you know, sustainable development goals, poverty, hunger, malnutrition, climate change, and now COVID-19. And uh, yesterday only you might have uh, seen on the television, the ingress of locust has come in. It's going to be a serious problem again, which we thought we had solved uh, decades ago. So there are problems which are not recognizing geographical boundaries and uh, uh, would require a global initiative. And there are also problems relating to national level, which means increasing income of the farmer, which has gone down. Uh, youth is not interested in agriculture. How to ensure that they embrace agriculture as a profession? And uh, how can we think of new policies by which farmer can be benefited. So when we look at policy reforms, they are needed to address both global and also national concern. And it is for that matter, a, a committee was constituted by government of India through initiative of principal scientific advisor. And this committee I happen to chair and uh, we submitted the report uh, last uh, August uh, and we were asked to review agriculture policies and suggest strategies, also or suggest ac action plan by which there can be better security. Security means uh, more resilience, uh, less risk for farmer and more income for them and sustainable that we don't uh, over exploit our natural resources. So when we look at global challenges, which are also linked to national challenge, no poverty, zero hunger, climate action, partnership. Uh, we still have 20% poverty. We have maximum malnourished children below five years of age, which need to be fed nutritious food and provided access to protein. Uh, climate action, and also we have to ensure partnership, not globally, I would say, more at national level uh, involving the private sector, NGOs, farmers in the fold of national agriculture research system. When we look at the climate change problem and, and look at agriculture, 
agriculture has been a cause to the level of about 24% as you see here from agricultural practices and also from land use. Uh, we, we see that uh, uh, there is definite concern from livestock production, uh, the carbon uh, emission which is taking place, uh, greenhouse gas emission, are because of uh, lack of proper management of our livestock, which is a large number, the uh, misuse of fertilizer, very low efficiency of fertilizer, uh, efficient rice production we have to think of. We have to make sure that we do not uh, go in for deforestation. We try to think of not having burning of straw and also think in terms of uh, not having degradation of our land. And so Paris Agreement requires the targeting of 2020 for three aspects. That is reduction in emission intensity. I think we are doing well going in for uh, the industry, which is not based on coal now, which is green and also switching over from use of diesel to CG, CNG and so on. Uh, electric uh, railways also. And uh, when we look at the non-fossil fuel uh, sources, India seems to be a world leader today for solar energy generation. And we are doing well there. And fortunately, thanks to our vision of present prime minister, that uh, other countries had only target of 2020, even USA backed out from that, but our targets are 35 and 40%, much higher than what globally is desired. And uh, we have a concern though for additional carbon sink, which has to come from forest. Our national forest policy demands that forest area increases from 24 to 33%, Unfortunately, this would not be possible because we do not have that kind of option available. And in that context, we have to have carbon sequestration to the level of 3 billion tons. And we thought it will come from forest cover, but I feel that there is a great opportunity for agriculture that through conservation agriculture and agroforestry, we can possibly help a great deal in achieving this target. Then at national level, Prime Minister again said, the income of farmers must be doubled. And uh, the vision is that we must now think of farmer first. Actually speaking, uh, when we come to the country, we hear that the country is a country. But today, that we have not made Krashak Pradhan. So our main objective and goal is now to make farmer first and for that, what can be done? For helping farmer, you have to understand his needs. And his needs are on the left side, which you probably can have a look at. They are numerous and uh, uh, major concern of the farmers and the youngster says that agriculture is not getting that dignity in the society. We have to ensure that we get a respectable status in the society and agriculture is considered to be the backbone. If it was not there, all these reverse migration today from uh, urban areas uh, due to COVID-19, uh, where would have gone? They are all going to their villages, presuming that at least they will have something to eat and live. Now, we need to link farmers to market. We make sure that uh, both consumer and the producer are benefited and the role of middleman is minimized. We need to provide them good knowledge. Mainly farmers want to have knowledge for new agriculture not traditional agriculture and better land and better uh, soil health. And for that, certainly there has to be more investment. 
and commitment and that commitment is forthcoming but probably would need much more uh, aggressive approach in that direction and we need to harness science technology especially the innovations by providing enabling environment for the protection of uh, the uh, innovation rights looking at reforms for secure and sustainable agriculture we are very clear that now we need agricultural diversification we need to go in for secondary agriculture we need to also embrace specialty agriculture and uh, above all today the challenge is not of production and productivity but the challenge is of minimizing the post production losses so how can we add value going for rural uh, low energy based value addition activities and linking farmers to market so there are opportunities but we need to consolidate these gains for uh, future and in that respect our committee had submitted this report uh, it was a consultative mechanism we had uh, had lot of uh, interface and uh, expert consultations and uh, came out with uh, uh, the road map for future and this report is available on the website of uh, psa also i understand uh, dr ak singh has put it on iri website and it is available also on tas website uh, those who would uh, be interested may kindly later on go through but some of the important aspects i will be covering right now uh, we need to look for a way forward and that's what i want in my address uh, way forward by not only thinking uh, internally but uh, thinking globally and learn from experiences and successes elsewhere and try to uh, imbibe those and also see that those are practiced in our own national interest the, the messages were that we need to now focus more in future on small holder farmers we have to reorient our research towards farming systems mode no more wheat rice or uh, uh, crop and commodity centered uh, we have to see that we have innovative ways of more investment in agriculture research for development uh, about linking farmers to market and youth i have talked but uh, there when i talk of youth especially the role of women has to be recognized and they need to be empowered to play their effective role to increase agriculture production and productivity which is possible to the extent of about 17 to even 30% as evident from the reports of uh, world bank and fao emphasis on innovation no more emphasis on research alone and publications but now we need innovation so that end user is benefited and his livelihood opportunities get uh, enhanced and effective partnership which i mentioned before so when we look at policies first part is that what is our national policy uh, fortunately in 2000 uh, the parliament had uh, passed the first national agriculture policy with which i was uh, directly associated and then dr swaminathan committee made a recommendation for national policy for farmers in 2007 almost two decades have gone and uh, i don't think people even have access to this these documents especially the national agriculture policy i found it difficult to lay hand on it and uh, now what is needed is we don't need two policies for farmer separate and for agriculture separate we need one new national agriculture and farmers welfare policy and this policy must be brought in now Uh, as a, as urgency and this policy should try to address all those concerns of security and sustainability addressing also sustainable development goals and when we had national exercise on sustainable development goals in partnership with ifpri let me tell you 
one message was very clear that if india doesn't make progress and achieve sustainable development goals at global level it will never be achieved so onus lies on us we have to move and we have to see that we address these concerns and make sure that our people come above poverty line and have no problem of nutritional security when we come to existing institutions they need to strengthen we have been talking for long even our report has suggested that why not elevate icar to the stature of baba atomic research center bark level of independence made all the difference still we have problems relating to functioning and we need to also double our resources resources to the level of 1% of agriculture gdp so far still we are struggling at 0.3 to 0.4 in last one decade these resource allocations have nominally increased to take care of uh, incremental uh, rise in the cost and uh, prices and uh, we need to make sure that we go in for corporate culture we embrace private sector we try to think in terms of resource generation and we also need to look for some kind of restructuring uh, there is no harm in looking for opportunities by which resource allocations for three functions can be ensured through different channels but to be kept under the umbrella of icar in that respect state agricultural universities we established them on land grant system 1960 was the first university almost uh, uh, it is uh, 80 years we have not even revisited our land grant system us has done it twice uh, why not we change if the change is required and why we continue with same uh, divisions of whatever it they we established at one time we have not even uh, unified the trimester and semester system about which i made a recommendation in uh, ars committee and uh, we need to also think that universities also embrace now vocational training programs so that there are people who can take up the services to serve farmers more effectively and become entrepreneurs rather than only uh, the formal training for white collar jobs we have to also have another catch up grant which we had once before and uh, make sure that there is in future no bifurcation of universities on the account of different sectors of agriculture that is counterproductive looking also at krishi vigyan kendra and and therefore i will later on suggest that how uh, we we can make sure that agriculture universities or locations could be uh, channelized differently so that they are not drain on agriculture research uh, allocations for our institutions krishi vigyan kendra uh, frontline extension and training with which we started with first now we have more than 720 we are very fortunate to have an institutional mechanism in each district which you will never find anywhere in the world but these institutions should now be made more holistic knowledge skill innovation centers and uh, also embrace agri clinic concept and uh, uh, we must ensure better resources that are available from other programs like atma or uh, social, corporate social responsibility of private sector panchayati raj institution under the constitution uh, it is uh, defined that uh, the responsibility for agriculture development should rest with uh, panchayats but we have not provided this authority and responsibility till yet 
they can also play a very important role because they know what is required at local level and uh, how to coordinate various programs and initiatives. No doubt, at times we do need also new institutions. And here I'm not trying to suggest many, but a few very important ones. Those which we have recommended in our report. We know agriculture is a state subject. There are issues like water, which have never been solved. Whether it is Satlaj Vyas, Yamna Canal water sharing, whether it is Pavri water sharing, it is for centuries going on. We have problem of land, uh, land holding, land consolidation, and uh, also land bifurcation. We have problems relating to marketing. I'll come to those also later. Uh, the interstate transfer of produce is not permitted. And uh, then we also find that education also is uh, differentially treated in different states. So for interstate coordination and interministerial coordination, because agriculture ministry has also been divided into various different ministries today, even animal husbandry ministry is different today than what it used to be before with agriculture. So we need a kind of coordination and convergence mechanism like that we have for GST council. So we have recommended that why not have national agriculture development and farmers welfare council headed by prime minister and uh, uh, participated by all concerned ministers, whether of center of our state, and take important decisions like water in Israel is a national asset. No one can claim water because it comes from their area. And they have to decide where, what water has to be used and for what purpose. Then coming to farmer's welfare, I had been the chairman of uh, Farmers Commission in Haryana for almost four years, I can tell you that having a national or state level commission for farmers is perhaps one very important uh, requirement so as to understand their difficulties and ensure that they uh, try to uh, link themselves with the policies and programs of the government to ensure the uh, support that farmers otherwise need. So why not? Every state should have. Why farmers should come to road and then raise their voice for their problems and difficulties? Why do not we have any statutory uh, power linked forum created so that their uh, problems and concerns are redressed periodically? Again, when we look at uh, various programs, and I was myself associated with the review of some of the programs in different ministries as well as in uh, DBT, we noticed that many schemes started almost five decades ago are still continuing. Can't we have a revision, a review, external review, uh, monitor them, and have evaluation for the impact. And I'm not saying uh, close them, but maybe reorient them for more purposeful use in today's context. So why not an externally uh, monitored project monitoring evaluation unit created uh, in place like Niti Ayo. And, and uh, another institution that we think is very important and needed like we have Veterinary Council of India, which regulates the quality and education of veterinary science. But for agriculture science, there is mushrooming of institutions and universities in many states today. With the result, the kind of uh, uh, products that they are coming out with are not of any use and uh, uh, able to uh, look for better employment for themselves. 
So why not have an agricultural education council of India created under there, embracing also the veterinary council of India under it, and uh, dealing the education related all matters on behalf of UGC uh, through there, where the secretary is uh, the director general ICR. So there is no dealing case that way. We have done it recently for ASRB uh, to bring it from the fold of ICR to that of DARE so that it has its own independent functioning. And why not this kind of council then is responsible for the quality assurance and also for accreditation and creation of institutions based on uh, assessment of facilities and uh, availability of staff and need of that particular region and area. So certainly uh, there are options relating to that. We now come to the uh, existing missions. Missions really had been of great help. Starting from oil seeds mission with which I was associated from the council that time and Dr. M. V. Rao was the mission director. Uh, in four years time, we reduced our import of of oil from abroad. But now we see that kind of mission and missionary jail does not exist because it was well coordinated, well monitored, irrespective of which ministry is participating, which department is participating. And now we find a kind of ritual there. And we examined many of these missions and uh, found uh, a clear need for uh, monitoring them and reorienting them. Also at the same time, like mission on horticulture had made great impact. We need similar kind of missions now for fishery, for livestock. With our report four years ago, government started a livestock mission, but uh, then mainly all existing schemes were put in place under it, uh, rather than making it a missionary approach to make a difference. And, and that's what is now needed conservation agriculture. I'll come to it a little later, why we need it, and protected cultivation, why we need it, and also seed and planting material, why we need it, and youth in agriculture. We need to embrace youth now. At one time, we embraced farmers and brought them into our uh, institute management councils. Why not youth is brought similarly under uh, whether university or ICR institutions, where education is imparted, uh, youth also is uh, brought in fold, like at a global level we created YPOD. We have also at national level now created ARIA program. Now we are talking of Maya. So there is definite need for a kind of reorganization and reform. Also, let me uh, briefly mention that we need to harness the science for new gains. And there are ample new opportunities emerging, whether big data through ICT, uh, GM crops. Uh, we only uh, released and uh, adopted BA, BT cotton, but not other GM crop for which there is great option. Uh, technologies like uh, bioinformatics, uh, genome editing, uh, drones, uh, now use of drones for locust control can be of great help. Robotics, artificial intelligence. Why do we uh, provide uniform fertilizer to all the plants in uh, horticulture garden if the need of individual plant is different? Or even in the crops. And uh, we need to have more farm mechanization, small farm mechanization and also look at improves our soil health, environment and sustainability, which can only be possible if we now make a difference by going in for eco-regional planning, which is more sustainable, which is based on availability of local resources and which is based on needs of that particular region. So scientific land use planning is a, a, a bigger area which needs to be looked at while we try to bring in reforms. And in all these reforms, 
when you, we said we have to lay emphasis on innovation, no innovation will be available unless there are right incentives and rewards. We brought in incentives and rewards through JOL committee report uh, long back in ICR, but uh, they need to be revisited again. And uh, we must make sure that performers are uh, incentivized and uh, uh, there is benefit to the end user in terms of uh, uh, output that we otherwise uh, need from them. So there is greater need to scaling the innovations in our report for action plan, we have given it. Uh, details are all available there, but look at some of these innovation. Hybrid technology is not new, but till today, in most of these crops, we have not covered more than 60% area. And in rice, not even 10%. 20 years ago, we came up with hybrid rice. China has 50% area. Now, when we will have 20% area, two decades for 10%, for maize, sorghum, uh, bajra, there are ample opportunities. Biotechnology, why not GM crop for soybean and mustard? We are importing soybean and mustard for oil extraction in large quantity, and that is all BT. It is also known that when you use defined oil, there is no entry of protein into human system. So there is no issue, question at all of phytotoxicity. Then why can't we think of going in for and provide useful technology to our farmers where they will save also uh, and increase their productivity. Soybean is today our number one oil seed crop in the country. And mustard is number uh, two now. Uh, and third is the groundnut. And uh, mage is uh, showing the highest growth rate uh, due to the hybrid maize in the eastern India, but uh, uh, much more can be done. And similarly, we have to think of conservation agriculture. Our conservation agriculture coverage is mainly in the endogenetic plane because we started the program when I was deputy director general, uh, rice wheat consortium to make sure that rice wheat is more sustainable. But the whole world is using conservation agriculture for rent-fed agriculture. Almost 200 million hectare area, Brazil, Argentina, USA, Canada, Australia, Turkey, you go, you don't find people having clean cultivation in dryland areas. We have dryland area development authority. We have to make dryland area green and we have to be more aggressive to ensure that conservation agriculture is now embraced much faster than uh, possibly what otherwise is expected. So we do need reform process here. We, know, we do need a mission mode approach here, protected cultivation. We started under NATP about which Dr. Uh, Mohapatra mentioned. Uh, many new initiatives were there in, in NATP. I would not go into the details of those, but that took care of sec sectoral imbalance allocations within agriculture, whether livestock, fishery, horticulture, crops, also interinstitutional partnership, and also missionary approach. And above all, we had seen that all these institutions are linked to uh, villages through institute village linkage program and even Atma was a part of that initiative. But when we look at protected cultivation, 20 years since then, area covered in the national dialogue, which we had only three years ago, it is only around 50,000 hectares. China has 2 million hectare area covered under protected cultivation. And when you look at the successful entrepreneurs in protected cultivation, they are earning income of more than five to 10 to even 15 lakhs per hectare uh, going in for protected cultivation. So why can't we now think of not only doubling, but 10 times of protected cultivation, but it will just not happen by saying that, yes, it is good and it should be adopted. It would require technical backstopping. It would require support. It would require good knowledge and it would require technology. 
micro irrigation we have done quite well thanks again to support for micro irrigation uh, starting from uh, green revolution time and uh, now we have covered about 6 million hectare uh, 30% area can be increased why can't we stop flooding of irrigation uh, like why can't we ban burning uh, about which i will talk and uh, uh, why can't we think of uh, stopping the distribution what we call is broadcasting of fertilizer which is uh, inefficient we need to go in for fertilizer seed drill system or decision support system and have to make it more efficient look at the options that are now available for bioenergy and biofuel we have the largest area of sugarcane and today dr mahapatra often talks about that india is having in the last one decade sugar revolution in the north and today our sugar recovery is the highest and we have 4 million ton excess sugar available in our stocks but we cannot export because our price is not competitive we have largest area of sugarcane we similarly have great opportunities in maize uh, the maize area is increasing the uh, maize growth rate is highest and uh, opportunities are tremendous uh, including even put qpm maize uh, but then why can't farmers be given or industrialists given option to produce more not at the cost of our food but produce more like what uh, countries like brazil and uh, us has done to use their sugarcane and maize respectively to the level of almost 20% can we do it now us is thinking of going in to the level of almost 40% and farmers have been benefited greatly there is a new option for their produce in the market similarly biofortified crop and ict uh, i don't have time to go into youth i have already said i would only like to mention that they have to be motivated they have to be provided enabling environment they have to have head holding the universities must play that role the icr institutions must play that role kvks must do that and make sure that they don't seek job but become job creator youth can become expert extension agents for paid extension now the time has come where we don't have to just give miracle wheat and rice and expect the technology to spread fast at its own if it is conservation agriculture protected cultivation if it is uh, say uh, production of uh, uh, shrimp or uh, going in for value addition in in the dairy that you would require a different uh, approach and expertise so youth have to be made entrepreneurs they have to be service providers more effective service providers and uh, uh we make sure that the agri clinic concept with the support of nabard becomes success so in the final aspect i would like to say government intervention is needed now for uniform adoption of apmc act in which now livestock is also uh, being included uh, decentralized state procurement process uh, why not long term exim policy short term exim policy will never help us uh, whether import or export luckily we have a robust uh, local market where we can sell our produce but uh, think of brazil australia uh, us where they have to export minimum 60 to 70% of their produce and if the export is not there their farmers will not survive here we have to also look at the export potential increase this export from 40 billion to why not 100 billion in next decades time and uh, minimum support price to farmers must be at 1.5 times which government had accepted but i think there is need to uh, calculate it on cost c2 basis 
for real benefit to the farmers. And uh, Mandi tax, uh, we found that different states have different uh, uh, Mandi tax uh, applied, ranging between five to even 17%. Why can't it be uniform? And that's why the uh, Agriculture uh, Development Council uh, is uh, proposed. We also want that at this stage, uh, the Seed Act lying for now two decades for its approval is revised and approved through uh, effective consultation with all stakeholders, especially the private sector. Pesticide management bill also need to be there, but we need not ban the pesticides just because other countries have banned. We must look at alternative and options for the farmers and make sure that uh, the, the pesticides are available to control uh, their crops. BRI bill, Land Tenure Act, Land Tenure Act to make sure that tenancy is assured for a longer term, but at the same time, landlord is assured of his land. And in that process, tenant can spend and invest for infrastructure development. Market reform, why do we have uh, Essential Commodity Act? I'll come to it again later. And subsidies, which government is currently giving, uh, both central and state, to the level of about 2.5 to 3 lakh crores, that subsidy should not be for specific uh, items, whether it is fertilizer or whether it is for water or whether it is for electricity. It should be linked to efficiency in farming operations. So we are saying that uh, don't invest more, but use same subsidy. And rather than the process of giving support to farmers of 4,000 or 6,000 per acre, make it 10,000 per acre, but link it with the efficient use of uh, resources uh, through good agronomic practices so that it is incentive oriented and uh, provided to farmers through direct benefit transfer. Credit support should also be there. And uh, uh, we must make sure that CSR is also considered in agriculture. So far, CSR Act doesn't uh, uh, embrace agriculture somehow. Agriculture must be also brought in. And uh, all those organizations, corporate sectors working in agriculture must come forward to support initiatives to increase the uh, motivation and attraction of youth in agriculture. Finally, we are so happy that some of our recommendations, particularly relating to this kind of uh, uh, market reform has been recently announced. Even for biotechnology, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, while reviewing under uh, the recent uh, lockdown period, had uh, emphasized that we need to embrace biotechnology more aggressively in agriculture. And market reform, finance minister has uh, mentioned about it. Why farmers should go to Mondays and sell their produce, which is perishable, and where they don't get a reasonable price? Why can't they sell directly anywhere uh, to the producer, uh, to, to the consumer? And in that respect, these are the slides which were presented by finance minister. So I'm just showing them again Amendment to Essential Commodity Act has been now realized as one of the reform that has to be brought in. It was brought in 1955 uh, during the days of scarcity. Today we have plenty of uh, uh, food stuffs available, whether cereals, edible oil, oil seed, pulses, onion, potato. So there is need to uh, deregulate them. And uh, also we have to see that the stock limits which were imposed earlier under exceptional circumstances are reviewed and re-looked at and uh, government must come up with a new uh, amended uh, act for marketing uh, as required. Similarly, APMC Act is with the government since almost 17 years now. 
but many states have not yet uh, considered it. So there is need to now look at the APM and Livestock Committee Act and also uh, see that there is free flow of produce. Now, a farmer cannot otherwise sell from one state to another. So how can you expect uh, to have a national E9, uh, electronic national agriculture market in place if the restrictions of this kind of interstate trade barrier are already existing. So we need a, a, a new framework and <coughs> central law, uh, which need to be formulated on priority uh, at the earliest possible. Finally, we all know that our nation is looking to be an important economy globally. Uh, we have already touched 3 trillion. We want to be 5 trillion economy uh, in near future. And when you look at India today, which is uh, currently compared to even Japan is uh, much less. China is almost less by five times and United States, it is less by almost uh, uh, seven to eight times. Uh, even countries like uh, United Kingdom, France, Germany, Italy are almost equivalent to us. We have great potential. Uh, as I have expressed before, currently contributing 17% to our national GDP, we can definitely increase it, especially if uh, we also try to include the value addition aspect of post-production management. And through that, uh, we can contribute out of 5 trillion, at least 1 trillion, which means 20% through agriculture uh, alone. But for that, we would need the reforms, uh, reform for more secure agriculture for farmers and sustainable agriculture for entire nation. And sustainable agriculture uh, has to come through good policy and governance, enhancing capital investment, incentives linked to good agronomic practices, priorities for scaling innovation, market reform, embracing private sector. And uh, 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 it is only through that we will be able to uh, provide secure future to our young generation. Well, this I would like to conclude. Uh, well, thank you again. All those who have in this uh, uh, webinar and also to organize your session because of the matter of all the senior colleagues from the council, director general, and uh, many senior uh, leaders from the sector who have come in and provided with support to Paul, a great visionary, a leader whose contributions will always be known and he had been a real son of India. And let us finally pay our final tribute to him while concluding this lecture. Thank you. Shashi, low battery, Lana. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Let's uh, give him a big hand. I don't know. <laughs> Unmute your mic and then clap. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a new way of appreciating uh, online. So we have to see how best we can do that. And this is a wonderful lecture, sir. We all uh, admire uh, your ideas and uh, continued, uh, you know, in interest uh, to. Uh, have a, a path which would be altogether uh, different and, as you said, disruptive ones, uh, many ideas. So, uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, uh, uh, as per program, uh, uh, what uh, you have provided, uh, it's only chairman's remarks, so there is no queries, questions, so obviously, so we can't, uh, you know, there are so many suggestions in the chat box. You know, so many people are congratulating, sir, for your wonderful lecture. That is what I, I have been reading all these, uh, you know, charts. And, uh, you know, uh, they are expressing 
uh, that uh, you have brought in many new ideas and uh, uh, many concepts, uh, many thoughts, uh, which uh, and also many policy uh, dimensions uh, which are to be actually implemented. Uh, so we are uh, we thoroughly enjoyed. I am sure everyone uh, you know present here enjoyed your lecture. Uh, you know uh, I should not really summarize because you know you have done so succinctly you know so elaborately every aspect of it. And for everyone that is uh, a lesson to learn and then there are many messages to take forward. And certainly uh, at the ICR headquarters level sitting there, there are many things for me to take home. And in fact, I have read the report. So some of those we have already started implementing. Uh, you know, on the Agriculture Council, for instance, Education Council, we have been trying for two years and we will push again. And uh, we have not got some favorable, uh, you know, considerations for that. So hopefully we will, uh, you know, again try and then see and try to convince if we can have it. And, uh, you know, uh, rightly said, sir, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, review of schemes, some of them are very old. And whether in, uh, you know, that's also happening by third parties. We have initiated it. I think that should be routine in Niti Aayog, as you suggested. Uh, that's a good, very good idea. It should be a routine process. And, uh, you know, every scheme, uh, you know, uh, while completing and before starting anything, it should routinely go to that particular, uh, you know, section in Niti Aayog so that it gets... Uh, reviewed by third party instead of we keep uh, keep on struggling and doing it uh, you know uh, through third party so many missions you talked about i think uh, you know there are uh, you know these are wonderful ideas and uh, i uh, you know would uh, initiate some of them at least uh, protected cultivation and youth in agriculture some of them are certainly worth uh, you know initiating and uh, we thought of uh, oil seeds we have been struggling street you know, oil seed mission was there. We were close to self-sufficiency. And today, still, you know, so much import and then more than 75,000 crore rupees being spent. And we have a small mission, you know, but then the kind of investment we need there. So it's not really there. So I think there's this message of having mission mode approach to, you know, uh, youth or to women or, uh, you know, uh, protected cultivation, conservation agriculture, even oil seed. You know, so that uh, needs uh, to be really looked at. Uh, so uh, eco-regional planning, we have already five, six uh, ecosystem-based uh, programs we are, we are making in the ICAR. That will be new ones. And uh, that would address your concern of this. And, uh, you know, all the divisional boundaries will melt there and everybody would be there in every ecosystem. And we are, we are this, uh, this, this new EFC would include those approaches and then programs and uh, we would uh, you know certainly work on those and i'll discuss more you know uh, uh, you know about it farmer centric policies and both uh, farm and farmer and then uh, you know uh, uh, all together uh, probably uh, as you rightly said uh, you know uh, the the uh, highest level the councils uh, for, uh, you know, on the interstate coordination and so on and so forth. And similarly, Farmers Council at the national level, at the state level, uh, and, uh, you know, several other things which you suggested, they are, uh, you know, worth pursuing. And uh, we will see how best we can, uh, you know, take those forward. Scaling of innovations, you know, you have been talking about it uh, uh, repeatedly, and uh, we have been actually discussing this. Uh, I think uh, these are the programs which uh, Department of Agriculture Cooperation uh, should take on again mission mode, uh, whether it is uh, scaling up, uh, you know, uh, uh, bioenergy uh, or, uh, you know, uh, biofortified crops, uh, micro-irrigation, all these, you know, uh, I think, you know, uh, micro-irrigation, we are now, you know, almost stagnating, uh, not moving, uh, you know, uh, much in that direction. Uh, so there's a great scope to really uh, take that forward. So, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, through discussion, this can happen. Uh, GM crops, there is a good movement at this point in time. Hopefully, we move faster. Uh, and uh, there are, uh, you know, certain positives uh, regarding this. Uh, so, uh, so there would be certainly some new, uh, uh, you know, uh, ways uh, that uh, might be 
uh, you know, unraveling as we as we go along. Uh, the idea of subsidy linkage, because see the kind of uh, management gap that exists in this country, we always compare our productivity, national productivity with the global level of productivity. But if you take the example of Punjab and take example of wheat and rice, and productivity is quite high and wheat productivity of Punjab, even national productivity is comparable to most countries. In fact, it is one of the highest actually. So, uh, you know, and if you take Punjab, this is, uh, you know, quite high productivity, but all our productivity, you know, the state uh, specific excellence gets diluted because uh, it's, uh, the performance is not there in other regions. So, so these management gaps are so huge. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if we link this, uh, that unless your productivity and resource use efficiency increases, your subsidy, you know, uh, would not be there. Uh, you know, how do we impose this and how do we follow this? You know, whether we can use technology like drones to assess this. And that would be uh, a great push uh, for uh, enhancing productivity, uh, you know, if it is uh, linked to, uh, you know, some of these uh, subsidy schemes. Instead of uh, randomly, uh, without uh, any condition, distributing these subsidies, you know, we have many, you know, you said farmer-centric programs. I think we should uh, be grateful to this government uh, for bringing so many farmer-centric programs, farmers' welfare-centric programs, whether it is PM Kisan and so on and so forth. So I think it's a, you know, kind of tremendous push uh, in current uh, regime, uh, under current regime, uh, to the farmers programs. I think that, that is a, we should give credit to the government. And, uh, you know, but then this idea, uh, you know, uh, whether it is fertilizer, whether it is uh, in uh, PM Kisan or something else, whatever, in term, whatever format of subsidy we are giving, you know, and if you can link it to resource use and then productivity, uh, that would be, uh, uh, you know, helping farmers to realize more profit and have more sustainable use of resources. And also at the same time, uh, we can have, uh, you know, uh, a great push towards, a move towards, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, 5 trillion economy, US dollar economy. And as you rightly said, and agriculture contributing about 1 trillion out of it. And, uh, you know, even you say about, uh, you know, about 35, uh, 40 billion, 39 billion or whatever, you know, our, uh, you know, kind of export, and if we can enhance it, double it uh, in another five years, that itself would be a big one. And, uh, you know, uh, export of seeds, for instance, there's a plenty of scope. And uh, once you talked about it, that how to export our seeds uh, you know, and exploit the, the global demand uh, supply gaps which are, which are existing. I think there's plenty of scope to really do that and, uh, you know, uh, to harvest, you know, this partnership. Uh, the, the last part which you presented, uh, great ideas again, that how do we, uh, you know, incentivize and, uh, you know, uh, link the uh, good agriculture practice. That's what I said, and good agriculture practices, uh, resource use, productivity increase, linking to that, uh, you know, with, uh, with subsidy. That, uh, you know, would be a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, decision, a policy decision on part of the government. Uh, uh, scaling innovation certainly would be, and I would certainly push it. We have been discussing, and uh, uh, some of these uh, proven technologies which can bring uh, revolutions uh, in the country, uh, you know, uh, they must be really taken fast forward. Uh, we are trying. It's not that we are not trying. Micro irrigation, as you rightly said, uh, you know, otherwise it would not have happened. And similarly, use of uh, uh, renewable energies in agriculture, or for that matter, in the country. Uh, you know, we are moving uh, quite fast, but still there are gaps. Bioenergy, as you rightly said, sir, tremendous scope to uh, enhance our product production via productivity enhancement uh, of sugarcane and uh, bioethanol production. And uh, maize has also great scope. And, uh, you know, sir, uh, you know, we have reached up to 6.5%, uh, you know, a substitution of, uh, uh, you know, uh, our uh, uh, petroleum uh, with, uh, you know, bioethanol. So, uh, and the target is 10%. So we are moving, uh, you know, in that direction. But the total going up to 20% is a big, uh, you know, kind of target. And it will take uh, quite a bit of efforts to reach there, as it has been done by Brazil. But uh, it is possible. 
you know, the, 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 there is a, if there is a push, I think, uh, you know, a big push and it should be possible. Uh, so, and the waste utilization, using waste to get uh, bio CNG and so on and so forth. So it's also thinking at the very high level that how do we really get bio CNG produced by using waste, so much huge waste and uh, being burnt, uh, rice straw, for instance. So there is a great scope in that, you know, bioenergy area. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, uh, these ideas are brilliant ideas, you know, uh, which are, uh, you know, certainly very, very important. And bringing private sector, sir, uh, you know, you had, uh, you know, so kindly agreed and we had this meeting. And uh, as I said that I keep telling that, you know, uh, agriculture needs, uh, you know, private sector engagement. And uh, we need to really, again, uh, sit uh, once again uh, with at least some people uh, to chalk out some, some programs uh, together. Uh, you know, uh, so there are some initial interests were there and uh, you know that uh, uh, in that meeting which you, sir, you uh, hosted, sir, organized. And uh, we'll be very happy and uh, it will be a great help to Indian system also that uh, if we can really bring, uh, you know, further, uh, you know, uh, uh, a partnership uh, with private uh, to, to uh, you know, have some uh, well-defined programs uh, where we can uh, have this. Uh, so uh, uh, now, uh, without taking any more time, and a lot of things you have said, I can't say anything and everything. And these are only is a summary of uh, you know a few of the things which you said, and uh, some of those which are already working, and some of those need our attention. And uh, we will have another uh, separate discussion with you, with your my DG colleagues, and then you, and then my you know some of the directors, uh, so that you know some of these ideas can be further sharpened, uh, and then you know uh, are implemented. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, properly, appropriately. And, uh, uh, you know, if we are not the implementing agency, certainly we can write to others with proper documentation, with facts and figures, uh, so that, you know, uh, uh, we uh, push it uh, through other agencies and departments. So uh, that would be the last uh, point set. Uh, with this, uh, once again, I uh, express our sincere gratitude to you, sir, uh, for agreeing to, first of all, to our request uh, to deliver uh, you know, B.P. Paul Memorial Lecture, and again, uh, you know, Dr. B.P. Paul uh, is, uh, you know, uh, a indelible uh, figure, and, uh, you know, uh, he remains in our memory forever, and uh, so, uh, so also uh, a person like you, uh, and we are very grateful, and the, my colleagues uh, from 925, so now 700 are there, you know, people have gone for other work, and, but it's a, such a huge number, we, we never expected and uh, but uh, that's the kind of interest, uh, you know, uh, the whole agricultural community, sir, they look uh, uh, up to uh, you and uh, leaders like you, and also uh, they would be guided by you, sir, uh, everyone uh, without any deviation. And uh, the whole community, even those who are not really associated with directly with uh, 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 research institution or university, uh, you know, but uh, keep interest in agriculture. They also listen what you say, and uh, on many occasions. And today is no exception. So with this, uh, you know, a tremendous effort of yours, so informative and uh, uh, so educative. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, you know, one second on behalf of everybody, on behalf of IRI, on behalf of ICR, our sincere gratitude to you for putting so much of effort and bringing in so many ideas to all of us. And uh, I don't know whether we can give a standing ovation to Dr. Proda, and still we can try, and those who are visible, and uh, then uh, give him a big hand once again, uh, you know. So that's what we can do. So our clapping should be visible. <laughs> that's what uh, I thought. Uh, okay, sir, thank you very much. Yeah, Dr. A.K. Singh, sir. Yeah, Harita, go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the very insightful comments. Uh, we now conclude the program with formal uh, words of thanks by Dr. Vinod, Professor, Division of Genetics and President Genetics Club. Sir, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. It gives me immense pleasure and joy to propose the vote of thanks on the occasion of 27th Dr. B. Pipal Memorial Lecture. 
first and foremost, I express my sincere thanks to Dr. P. S. Baroda, Chairman Tas, for taking out time for this important event and delivering this insightful lecture on reforms for secure and sustainable agriculture, a roadmap. I also extend my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, Secretary Deer, and DG ICR for his gracious consent to chair today's event and also for his valuable remarks. My sincere thanks to Dr. A.K. Singh, Director IRI, for his overall support and help in organizing this event in a short period of time in such a challenging situation when most part of our country are under lockdown due to corona pandemic. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Rashmi Adrawal, Dean and Joint Director Education, for her inspiring guidance and support. I express my sincere thanks to entire NEHEP CAST team for their support in organizing this online event. I would like to express my special thanks to Dr. Rajarshi Roy Berman for his untiring efforts in managing the event online. I profusely thank Dr. Harita for comparing this program. I would also like to record my deep appreciations to Dr. K. M. Manjaya, Associate Dean, and Dr. Gyan Prakash Mishra, Secretary Genetics Club, and his team for their wholehearted support. I express my gratitude to all the dignitaries from IRI, ICR, ASRB, PPBFR, and many other organizations who have joined on this occasion in this lecture. I'm also thankful to heads, professors, faculty members, scientists, and students from IRI program online and uh, attended in large numbers. Once again, I would like to thank each and everyone for making this event a great success. Thank you, Dr. I must tell you this is live on YouTube with uh, equal number of viewers on YouTube, probably larger. So it's a very wide coverage. Thank you for your kind uh, presence and for uh, agreeing. And uh, thanks to our honorable DG for sharing this with Thank you very much. Thanks, each and everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then. Thank you, sir. We'll okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. All the best. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir. Welcome. Our pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Misra. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank you very much. Okay, Rai, you can uh, now Close. call off the meeting. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Barman. Thank you, Madam.